Hey everybody, I'm Nathaniel Dodds from Tutvid.com, and today we're going to take a look at using Adobe Premiere Pro to create this sort of revealing or unmasking text title effect. It's really cool. It's really easy. I think you're really going to like it. And if you do like it, hey, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel so you never miss another Premiere Pro tutorial in the past, present, or future. Let's jump in and check this thing out. All right, over here in Adobe Premiere Pro, well, I've got this little video clip set up, and it's just a clip that's slowly zooming in over this little wintry cottage, right? Uh, the first thing I like to do here is come over here and hit my little wrench icon, and I like to turn on my safe margins. This is just going to give me some straight lines because as we use the pen tool here to create sort of our horizontal line, Premiere Pro doesn't have a really good way to just ensure that you create a straight line, at least not one that I've found yet. You know, that whole, like, if I'm in Photoshop, I can click once, hold down shift, and click again. Meh, doesn't doesn't quite work in Adobe Premiere Pro, as nice as that would be. Uh, so what I'm going to do here, now that I've created or set up or turned on, I should say, my safe margins, I'm going to select my pen tool, as you see, and I'm going to click right here at this bottom corner, just one of these straight lines. So I'm going to use this bottom line. So I'm going to click there, and I'm going to come all the way across right over here to this part of the line. I'm going to try to line my pen tool up as best I can, and I'm just going to click there, and it looks reasonably straight. If you don't like the way it looks, hit Command or Control Z to undo it, and just try clicking and dropping a point again. All right, I think I still went a little bit too high there, so I'm going to try one more time. There we go. That's probably a little bit better. Now, I have my settings the way that I want them to be. Over here in the Effect Controls panel, you can see here I've created this shape, Shape 01, and I don't have a fill. You don't want a fill. If there's a fill, just uncheck the fill. We want a stroke. I'm going with a white stroke, and I've set the, the width to 15. So that's creating what we've got here. That's great. Now, before we do anything else, I'm going to select my uh, selection tool here, my move tool, if you will, and if I select the shape, you can see here out in the video preview, we get sort of these transform handles around the whole thing, right? Pretty cool. But over here on this end, we've got this big circle. That's the anchor point. I want to move that anchor point. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to come down here to my selection, uh, selection zoom, I should say, and I'm going to zoom to like 400%. I want to get in tight here, and I'm going to use my little scroll bars here to scroll down to my white bar, and then I'm going to use my horizontal scroll bar and move over. I want to take this uh, this anchor point and move it. And you see how my cursor has that little like quad arrow? That's mean. That basically means I can grab this anchor point and I can move it. So I'm going to try to move it to the very center of my line. So I'm going to click it, and I'm going to drag over to the left. I'm going to drop it wherever because uh, I'm going to move it again here in a second. I need to get over to the point where I, I see these middle lines because that's what I want to line it up with. Not that little tiny line there. That's a line on my safe margins. We can ignore that for right now. I want to drag this anchor point over to like right about there. I'm not really concerned about it being aligned at top and bottom. I'm more or less concerned with it being aligned left and right. And if we want to take the precision of this anchor point to the next level, and sometimes it's important to do that, uh, over here in the effect controls, we have this transform option down here. You can hit that arrow, scroll down, and we have the anchor point. And you can see we, we did actually almost align it perfectly top to bottom. If we just set this to zero, you're going to see it'll move just a little bit and now the anchor point is centered top to bottom perfectly. And then maybe we want to knock this down. So maybe we try like 763, or I'm sorry, we push it up a little bit. And I don't know, does that look about right? It looks like it's about lined up. And uh, now on our safe margins, that little tick mark, that's the center of our frame. And these anchor points are the center of our line. So this, the, the line is not aligned perfectly to the center of our frame. So let's just shift our line a little bit over. So we're going to take the position here. Let's move it up to like 958 and see what that looks like. All right, that's not quite right. We'll go like 960. You can see we're a little bit closer. Yeah, that's probably about right, actually. So now we have our line lined up with our document. I'm going to go back and set my zoom to the fit. And you can see here we have this nice line now that is going to run across the very center of our document. We just need to slide the line upward. And we can do that by changing the Y positioning here, this 975.5. I can just click on the number and just click and drag. I'm dragging to the left. And let's bring the line up to about right there. Now we want to animate the line. So we want to an animate the scale of the line. I want the line to be in this fully finished state at the, the end of the animation. So we want our animation to take place over 15 frames. So what we'll do is we'll hold down the shift key and tap the right arrow key one, two, three times. There we go. That's 15 frames out. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to uncheck uniform scale. That'll allow me to scale horizontally. I don't need to scale vertically. We just want this line to shoot out sideward. And I'm going to click the toggle animation stopwatch. It's going to drop our keyframe out here in the animation a timeline. Then I'm going to move back a little bit before that keyframe. It can be anywhere. And we're going to set the horizontal scale to zero. So this is kind of the beginning of the animation. I'm going to drag a selection over these two keyframes, right click and choose to ease this in. Then I'm just going to select the first keyframe and drag it all the way to the very beginning of this graphic. Now, speaking of the graphic, you can see it here. It's sitting on top of the video. We want to drag this out so it's as long as our video, so our title stays in place. But if we hit the spacebar key and just play through our animation, 
you can see we've got a nice animation that just you know kind of shoots out just like that. We're ready to accept text. So let's go ahead now and add some text. I'm gonna collapse this little path. In fact, I'm gonna deselect out here in my timeline so that graphic can kind of live where it lives. Let's add our text. Grab the type tool and just click anywhere. And you can see here we've got a new sort of graphic created and that's the graphic that's containing our text. And, and I'm gonna type out over here, I'm gonna type in all caps, uh, winter film, something like that. I'm gonna hit the escape key and there's my text. Now what I want to do is number one, stretch this out as long as my graphic because you know we want it to be as long as the graphic. And I'm going to drag my, my playhead over just so I can see where the line is. And then I'm going to drag my text. You can see Premiere almost gives us this like nice snapping action. And we know the text at least is nicely centered here in our video frame. There's a little bit too much of a gap though between the bottom of the text and the line. So what I'll do is over here in the text, I'll make sure I select the text. And uh, whoop, I'm going to undo that. I don't want to change the uh, typeface. I'm going to just scroll down over here. I'm going to open up my transform options and I'm going to drag my Y positioning to the right. So that's going to pull the text down. Maybe to like right there is kind of where I want it to be. Now before we do anything else, I want to create a mask that this text is going to kind of shift underneath of, which will give us the illusion of the text being revealed. So I'm going to pop back up here and right underneath text winter a film, we've got these uh, two shapes, an ellipse and a rectangle on the pen tool. I'm just going to hit the uh, ellipse and you can see, or the ellipse, I'm sorry, the rectangle. And it's going to give me this little rectangle rectangular mask and you can see only the areas uh, that the mask is you know sort of looping a selection around are the bits you see so I'm gonna select the anchor point here in the top left hold down shift select the anchor point on the bottom left hold down my shift key and just hold the right arrow key and just nudge this all the way over until the text is totally revealed and then I'm gonna select uh, the top right anchor point or I'm sorry the top left anchor point and then I'm gonna hold down shift and select the bottom left anchor point and I'm gonna just nudge using shift in the left arrow key just push that mask way over great uh, the important thing to note here is the bottom of the mask is at the line. So it, basically any text that comes up past the line, it's going to give the appearance that it, you know, when, when the text is down beneath the line, because the mask isn't sort of uncovering that part of the text, it's going to disappear. Uh, just, just to give you a quick example of that, if I shift the positioning of my text downward, see how it just disappears when it's not where it should be. I'm just going to undo that. We're going to play with that in a second. One thing I want to do here is on my mask, I think I want to increase the mask feather to like 20, just make it a little bit more of a softer entry. Uh, it'll be kind of a neat little effect. And may maybe you love it, maybe you hate it, uh, but at least the mask gives you the option to do that. It almost makes it look like there's a little shadow there as our text comes past the line, which is pretty cool. But now we actually need to make the text come past the line, right? I, I don't want that little keyframe there. I don't know what that's doing there. In fact, I'm going to come over here and just make sure that I shut the animation off for the source text altogether because the only thing we need to animate is the position and in fact I want to make sure that my first keyframe uh, goes where the line animation ends so we can move backward and as we just kind of move through this, maybe we'll make our animation begin before the line completely finishes so let's actually begin our animation here right so what I'll do is I'll come down here and I'm gonna drop a keyframe I'm gonna toggle the position animation by hitting that little stopwatch it's gonna drop a keyframe now we are on our text so we're up here on our text object. We're not playing with the graphic. Uh, we're just observing the graphic for the, the matter of timing. Uh, so at that point, we'll want our, our uh, animation to begin. And then we want the animation to take place over 15 frames. So hold down shift and tap the right arrow key one, two, three times. And then this is where the animation will complete. Now what we're going to do here is we're just going to hit this add new keyframe button because this is where we want the animation to finish. We want the text to look like this. So we actually need to adjust our first keyframe. So let's hit this little go to previous keyframe button. I'm going to just shift and make my panel a little wider. There we go, previous keyframe. And all we need to do now is adjust our Y positioning and just push it forward. So I'm, I'm dragging to the right. I click the number, I'm dragging to the right. And there we go, that's probably good enough. I can just loop a selection around both of those keyframes. I'll right click temporal interpolation. I'll probably go with like ease out in this case and let's check to see what we've got here. So I'm just going to play through it. Boom. Just like that. You have a very quick and easy text reveal title that you can create in Adobe Premiere Pro and it's live text. You can change it to whatever you want. It's super easy to do. It's super useful. I think you guys are really going to like it. Make sure again you subscribe to my YouTube channel if you enjoyed this tutorial. And guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, this one we covered a bunch of different nice, simple, compact, mm, Features right here on Premiere Pro uh, for this one. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do. And this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.